So the Pokemon Go Battle League preseason has now moved in to the Ultra League. And if you haven't started feeling the Stardust pain already, you're going to be feeling it in two weeks once we go to the Master League. So my goal in this video is to get you guys prepared for the Ultra League as best as I can on a budget. So you're actually able to participate well in the Ultra League and participate well in the Master League. Of course, I do have a full detailed Ultra League guide coming out soon, so make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips and stay tuned for that. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some choice budget picks for you guys and some team building strategies to get your feet wet with the Ultra League. Before we get into the tips, I wanna give a shout out to FLW Videos. If you're not aware, he recently got his account hacked and after pleading with YouTube for a couple weeks now to try to help him out, no response from YouTube, his account got terminated. So he's screwed now. There's no getting that back. He has to work all the way back up to over 100,000 subs and he is just boned. So if you want to drop over to his channel, give him a subscribe. He does Pokemon Go videos all the time. So if you like my content, I believe you'll enjoy his too. And if you're feeling generous, maybe throw him a donation, check out his merch. I honestly can't imagine what he's going through right now. Look, I can a little bit and uh, I, I can imagine that a lot of it too if I wanted to and definitely sucks. So help the guy out if you can. Just drop him a sub if you want to. That would be awesome. And after that, Come back here and let's get into the tips. First I want to talk about Togekiss and Snorlax. Both of these Pokemon are excellent for the Ultra League and the Master League, but there is a weird trick with them that you should be aware of. Yeah, their baby forms, Togepi and Munchlax, only cost 10,000 Stardust to get their secondary move. So if you don't already have a Snorlax or a Togekiss like at level for the Ultra League or the Master League, which is maxed out, uh, then consider two moving a Munchlax or a Togepi before evolving. Not only that, but if you don't already have a Togekiss or a Snorlax maxed out, or your maxed out Togekiss and Snorlaxes don't have 15 attack IVs, aren't basically hundos for the Master League, will make your Ultra League ones those high IV Pokemon. Now I know if it comes to PvP IVs, if you don't know what PvP IVs for the Great League and the Ultra League are about, check out my video uh, up here. If you don't know about that, check out that video. Basically low attack stat, high defense, high HP is favored. For the Master League, you want max on everything because there is no cap. Well, for building your Togekiss and your Snorlax now, I recommend going with that high IV, almost hundo, 98% whatever Pokemon. And the reason why is because even though the IVs aren't ideal for the Ultra League, in two weeks, we're going to be in the Master League. So all you got to do is bump up those guys a little bit more, and bam, they're ready for the Master League. Now you might be thinking, Ryan Swag, why don't I just build a whole nother one if they're good there too and also good here? Well, you got to think about what Stardust you have now and what Stardust you may have then. You only have two weeks until the Master League, and then once you're at the Master League, you have four weeks, presumably, until the Ultra League picks up again. So you know, more time to prepare, more time to get some trades in and get some good Ultra League IVs in for these Pokemon too. So budget tips right there. Next, I wanna talk about Giratina Altered Form. It's no secret that Giratina Altered Form kinda rules the school when it comes to the Ultra League. So powering up a Giratina Altered Form isn't that hard for the Ultra League. It's like basically already almost there. It just takes a little bit of candy and a little bit of Stardust to get it rolling. The big Stardust Sync is in the secondary charge move. You need 100,000 Stardust and 100 Candy to get a second move on your Giratina Altered Form. Well, I'm gonna tell you guys, it's really nice to have that second charge move, but you don't 100% need it for Giratina to be good. You can roll with either Shadow Claw or Dragon Breath with the Dragon Claw, and uh, it's gonna be rocking it. Now, having the secondary charge move is nice. Ancient Power hits Ice Pokemon and Togekiss and you know, flying fire type Pokemon for super effective damage. Uh, you also have Shadow Sneak, which allows you to take care of steel type Pokemon that think they counter you. So those secondary moves are nice, but if you don't have the dust or you don't have the candy to get those moves, Giratina is still Giratina, man. Spam them down with the Dragon Claw damage. Uh, also, cool thing to note is if your Giratina has like a 12 attack IV or higher for this, going with Dragon Breath gets a break point on some relevant Pokemon in the Ultra League, including Swampert. A lot of people out there are going to be expecting the Shadow Claw set. You come rolling in with that high attack IV Dragon Breath, you can just mow them down. And they're like, what? I was supposed to do my charge moves and, and counter you kind of. Oh, no. You know, that's, that's, that's what I imagine. That's what I do when that, when that happens to me. So I don't know what you do, but, um, 
Yeah, that's the that's the intended effect there. Uh, personally, I feel like Shadow Claw is the better set on Giratina, but if you're going for the single charge move, Dragon Breath does sound a little tantalizing. Now, for other picks in the meta, and for team building purposes, I have my prototype for my Ultra League infographic. There are much more picks than this, a little bit more interesting than this, um, but this is what I have right now. Making more detailed infographics takes a lot of time, and I wanted to get tips to you guys sooner than later. Expect the more detailed infographic either tomorrow or the next day. At any rate, this is the basic rock, paper, scissors of the meta. You have the Giratinas, both of them, uh, countering Registeel for the most part. Giratina Altered Form does need to have the Shadow Sneak to do it consistently, um, but the non-Shadow Sneak variants can beat Registeel too. Uh, Registeel beats the Charm users. Charm users are super deadly. I recommend Togekiss because you have to max out Clefable, very expensive. Uh, at any rate, these guys beat the Giratinas. They're Dragon-type Pokemon. These guys just throw Charm at them. Super easy to win, right? And then you've got Pokemon that can counter both of the groups at the same time to varying degrees of success. You got the Fire-type Pokemon, Resist Charm, so they beat Charm. Super effective to the Steel, so they beat the Steel. Then you got the Ice-type Pokemon, which are super effective to Togekiss. When it comes to Clefable, Clefable can beat Lapras. Clefable can't beat the Alolan Sandslash, though. It's a sub-steel type. However, you do have to max out. Uh, this guy, too. Sucks, right? And then the Ice types. Super effective on the Giratina Altered Form. And then you've got Registeel and Giratina Altered Form. Giratina Origin Form does have uh, some finesse wins over this guy. However, if you fail your baits, the Altered Form wins. And then Snorlax just kind of shuts down both Giratinas and can bait and beat the Registeel. Now aside from Snorlax, I also want to highlight Ursaring. Ursaring is nice, cheap, and powerful, and much more consistent than Snorlax is. Uh, Snorlax does have better matchups against random stuff in the meta though because of the body slamage. But if you are curious about Ursaring, Shadow Claw with the play rough, with the close combat. You get up against Registeel, just go straight close combat, and then play rough is nothing that the Giratinas want to deal with. And a bonus tip, if you are familiar with how to use PV Poke, I'm not going to teach you how to do it right here, uh, check to see if your Ursaring is getting an attack breakpoint on the Shadow Claw on Giratina Altered Form. If you are able to get that attack breakpoint, it makes the matchup like way more consistent. But if you don't have it, you're going to beat it anyways. Just small tip there for those that are in the know of PV Poke. The ultimate PVP resource, if you're, if you're not aware. At any rate, yeah, basic rock, paper, scissors. Bam, 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 and then there's the nice picks that can handle both of them, but are less consistent against the rest of the meta. And what I mean by that is, while these picks, you might think, why don't I just go with a fire type and ice type and like Snorlax, and that just beats everything, right? Well, these picks will be less good against random stuff that you might run into, where these guys kind of smooth that out. So picking any one of these and then going with something that complements it well is going to be a good way to build a team. For example, let's say you pick. Togekiss. Togekiss is going to have a weakness to the Registeel. So if you're going to back up a Togekiss on your team, you may as well pick a Fire-type or perhaps a Snorlax or an Ursaring to help this thing out. And then because you do have some variety in the counter picks that you can also pick, going with two of them could also be good. For example, they lead Registeel, you lead Charm User, you swap to Snorlax, they swap Registeel out, well, now Snorlax is going to be weared down, it'd be nice to have another option in the back to counter Registeel. So that's a simple uh, paper, rock, other rock type strategy to use. Uh, you know, Togekiss here is the paper, this is the scissors, and you got two types of rocks you can throw at it. Very consistent strategy. It's what I'm using in the Ultra League. And if you guys are curious about other picks that also work in the Ultra League, uh, here is the rough draft for the better graphic I'm working on. I just threw shapes on MS Paint. Uh, this is Giratina, this is Registeel, this is Togekiss. If you are an elite trainer, you'll be able to decipher what's going on in this graphic. But yeah, these are the shared counters. So you got Zangoose, you got Lucario, uh, Snorlax, Swampert, Ursaring. Uh, fire type Pokemon, Ampharos. I'm actually running Ampharos. I'm gonna have a video up on that soon too, so keep your eyes peeled for Ampharos rocking it in the Ultra League. Um, Mewtwo Armor, the other Regis, um, Blastoise. That's that's a Blastoise. <laughs> uh, Toxicroak, Ice type Pokemon, Alolan Mux, Steelix, Drapion. Uh, so I told them to you guys, but the the graphic will make it make a lot more sense. So. 
get ready for that one. At any rate, I hope this video helped you prepare for the Ultra League on a budget and uh, gave you a good way to figure out how to make a team. I do have a more in-depth Ultra League guide coming out in the near future, so make sure to subscribe to me for that to get those tips. If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And last but not least, if you haven't subscribed to FLW's new channel already, make sure to do it. This guy needs all the help he can get right now. Greatly appreciated.